What is going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer, Tim Hyde, live on YouTube with this week's Notre Dame football show. And for folks listening via podcast, what's up to you as well? Hope that your week is going well um, for folks listening or watching back on YouTube. Hope you are enjoying your time as well. Tim, you doing okay, my friend? I see you're not in the boat this week. You just got a nice haircut. Yeah, nice haircut. Looking good. No, I just left. A wonderful campfire, family, friends, everyone's doing the s'mores, enjoying a you know a nice cold drink tonight. And I was like, got to do a podcast. There's just so much going on. Fun news, a little exciting re- uh, recruiting news, meltdowns every six minutes. So it's like, I can't miss this Wednesday. Come on. So I gave up a little s'mores and a drink to come hang out with everyone. So here we are. Yeah, I mean, you get paid to talk Notre Dame football. There's for you know, there's definitely worse yeah. things to. Real quick, just a little uh, Mike Singer promotion. Is this not? I'm gonna have to go back. Like right behind me nerd. is every blue and gold yearbook. Yeah. And is this the best looking guy ever on a yearbook? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to debate that. So here's the just came in the mail about 48 hours ago. So looking good. Well. You know, when I get on that football preview one of these days, then uh, it'll be me. <laughs> there you, hey, but for now Hartman can have it. Blue and gold illustrated picking Notre Dame to go. I always look at first thing I do, Mike. The prediction. Score. I always go right to every game, find that line for the predictions, and blue and gold picks eleven and one. Well, there's four. Was I even on that? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah you're in there. Okay, I can't remember if they asked me to do the season prediction. We're coming out with our top 25. Yeah, you, Steve Downey. I mean, it's like five or six of you guys all have um, predictions, obviously. Just saying 10 and 2, 11 and 1, yeah. your little. This is where you can folks can buy it. So it's it's blue gold. So blueandgold.com is our, our website, right? But for the magazine website, it's bluegoldonline.com. Go to. 2023 football preview and uh you can get free shipping right now so uh i mean you can get it digital only um uh, for a little bit cheaper and instant access or you can get you know the copy in your hand i got mine in the mail um i checked i, I want to say got in monday yep. um so uh yeah pretty stoked about that uh, i did that big article uh where i got to interview jerome betta senior and junior um brian urlacher uh, Jim and James Flanagan. Um, so there's some pretty cool interviews um, just from there, as well as, you know, Tyler Horka and uh, Kyle Kelly, I believe Jack Sobel even got in there a little bit. Uh, and then Patrick Angle, who no longer works for Blue and Gold. Um, but one of his last things he got to do for us was uh, crank out a ton of content for that uh, for that football preview. So, yeah, it's uh, it's got some good stuff in there, Tim. You got to read much yet? I'm just flipping through it and whatnot. No, I mean, uh, this going to be my little weekend morning, a cup of coffee, start diving into it. But uh, yeah, for all the Notre Dame fans, I mean, I I have every blue and gold yearbook since the mid 80s. I mean, literally, and they are the best things to do. Go back, especially uh, especially for recruiting, all the Mike Singer predictions you read 10 years later to see who's who. And those are the best to see who makes it to the NFL and and whatnot. So uh, they're a must call blue and gold, get it. If your favorite year is 2012, you know, they'll have a copy for you. So it's uh for all those diehard Notre Dame guys, it's definitely a must, uh, a must have because there's blue and gold's the only one that does a, a Notre Dame only yearbook. So it's a, uh, it's a must have for the season. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I had a, I had a viewer and, and Gene's probably watching or listening to this. He emailed me the other day. Um, and said, Hey, uh, I-, I want the, the yearly magazine. Cause I know you guys do the recruiting one and the football preview, but what about the monthly during the off season and weekly during football season? Like, yep. We still do it 20 issues a year. Yeah. And it's, I can't remember the price. But I think it's less than hundred bucks. So yes, if you are watching or listening to this show, you're a diehard. Like it, what, what's today as we record this, is it the fifth, sixth? the fifth, it's July 5th. And you're tuning into a Notre Dame football show, yeah. You're you're a junkie, so you'll definitely uh, want to go um, to bluegoldonline.com and pick that up. And of course, blueandgold.com. Um, Tim, I promised at the end of last week's show that you're going to make your your uh, your second TikTok video. I posted it today. Nice. I thought it turned out great. I tweeted it as well, like on Twitter, Facebook, okay. Instagram, TikTok, 
It's all. It's everywhere. It's all everywhere. We love it. Love it. All right, got a few comments. Jeremy says, "I want to get paid to talk Notre Dame football." I mean, dude, it's it's uh, it, it's awesome. It, it, it truly is awesome. And for folks wondering, how do I get to do that? Go do something. Like if you're wondering how how can I get if you could get into Notre Dame media, just go do something. Go go get noticed by someone. Go work for free and 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 write or or do a podcast something and get picked up and noticed. That's the number one way you do it. So for any any young folks or anyone who's really aspiring to be a Notre Dame journalist, there you go. Um, what's worse for your health, s'mores and beer, or talking Notre Dame football? Jay Carr, that is a great. That's a great question. I'll let the chat ponder that. And oh, Richard like and Mike, that. have you been stopped yet as a Hartman lookalike? I mean, I think it's daily at this point. Uh, but we have a super chat from Andrew Gilmore with 10. He says, and this whole show is recruiting really, but if there's yeah. good comments and, and questions and super chats, we will we'll get to those um, regarding really any topics. Andrew says, the offensive side of the ball is doing just fine on the recruiting trail. It's kind of strange considering Notre Dame as a first-year offensive coordinator with a little experience. Are offensive coaches doing anything noteworthy that the defense can do? It's a good it's a good question. Um, I mean, well, the offense, a lot of these guys were – I mean, you, you know me, Mike. I'm a pot of gold guy, so this stuff is – months and months and months ago these offers went out and obviously not every offer who's committed is a pot of gold guy but that starts the process as i like to use for recruiting so obviously out of that you got car i mean car was offered before but he's basically one of those you have him then they got obviously with cj car what that led to williams larson correct out of the the little junior camp that they did and um, who else? Who else is a pot of gold guy? I mean, was Williams? I don't know if Williams was, but he was probably right after Young. I, it seems like Kedron Young. They've been on for a long time. January. What? Is it? Is it that new? Yeah. It's like January, February. It's I, it's. I can it's really football. It feels like two years already. Holy moly! It's only January. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Here, here's my take on this. It's the position coach that really matters most of the time. Like, and he is Williams. Talk to Tommy Reese, obviously, but like Dylan's his guy, yeah. Marcus Freeman's his guy, Chad Boat. Like, not that I'm not trying to dog on Reese and saying that this is a different discussion, but if but if Dylan McCullough leaves, now you're talking about ooh the running back position. Do yeah, those guys a different animal or receivers? Right? Cam Williams, like Tommy Reese had a pretty big part in Cam Williams recruitment, but uh, Tommy Reese, Tommy Reese leaves. I mean, you still got Chancey Stuckey, Marcus Human Wright. So I don't I don't think that's a big part of it. And, and then yeah, Parker's experience, I mean, they can go through his experience. I mean, it's 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 good. I mean, so the, these kids are, you know, going to Notre Dame than more than just the offensive coordinator experience. And then in terms of your second question, I just think Stuckey and and, and McCullough are such rock stars. Uh, you know, the O-line recruits itself a little bit. So so does tight end, uh, even though Parker did a really good job with Larson. Uh, and Larson is kind of one of those forgotten guys on the class. His rankings plummeted. Um, I, I, big time schools still want Jack Larson. He's not really entertaining him to my knowledge. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Larson's still a big time player. Uh, and then, of course, you have C.J. Carr. You know, when his position coach did leave, there was – those few weeks, Tim, where it's like, oh, is he sticking? Yeah. And they're, you know, the reporting was always from me, and I'm sure other sources as well. Like, he's gonna stick most likely, but like the Notre Dame still needs to make sure everything's good. And, and it was at the end of the day. So yeah, and all you know, and you got O line, obviously Peter Jones was so early. He stand yeah. went after him so early. You had Pot of yeah, Prescott it was a he stand offer, went and evaluated, wanted him. You know, Knapp was a Rudolph guy, got him instantly as soon as he got hired. Now just waiting on Lambert, who's a pot of gold guy from, from that class to round out that. And deep yeah, defense has just been has been all over the map. Yeah, it has. It, yeah. It's been all over the map. It's been interesting because the defense, I mean, the defense was not horrible. They're not out there getting road graded. They're not out there getting dominated last year and whatnot they played solid football yards per game which people hate but that stat it's as old and you know as it is 
it was still the best defense at Notre Dame since the iconic 2012 unit. For, you know, when you're going just giving up yards per game, they did not give up thousands and got destroyed. Obviously, Cam Williams made made him look like uh, bad, but he did that to everyone. You know, and uh, outside of the pulled hamstring game against Utah in the championship, so he was a stud. It was it's, it's an interesting year on defense and defense. I mean, they go down. They went down south a ton. They offered a ton of guys, and those are just some hard areas to gain traction. So um, there are some probably under ranked guys, I would say, in this class. When you look at the two corners, Carson Hobbs in the five hundreds, which yeah, I just, I just rechecked the rankings about an hour ago when I was jotting a few notes, and I thought that was just amazing, just where he plays and whatnot. Uh, the Moore kid is outstanding. The the corner out of Texas, I like him so. It's an interesting class. I know we're, you know, we're going to get on one of the gentlemen here in a few minutes, but they still got four defensive linemen. They got two linebackers. You know, they got a top 200 safety and Tay Johnson recently coming. Two corners that have been committed, Mike, since, what, the first of the year, if not before, right? They, they've had those two corners forever from Mike, uh, from Mike Micken. So you get Thomas out of Texas, who's a heck of a football player out of Houston. Highly ranked kid. So it's just interesting just because there's some big, big names that they've lost out on. So the assumption is the class is horrible when, you know, it's really not. Yeah. A solid group of players. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, yeah. When you think about the defense, the really the only marquee guy is Tay Johnson yeah. and he's primarily a receiver. So I got the high school. Level. So folks are like worried about defense. I get it. But remember, you know, when Notre Dame goes and plays, you know, whoever it is in a couple of years, it's not the 2024 defense that's out there. It's multiple classes. Yeah. So you hit on a few of these guys, you know, it, it's fine. Well, you know, Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas, I would also say, is very marked. He's actually the third rank, highest ranked guy in the class for Notre Dame. So that is a mistake on my part. And, um, and that's a great point, real quick, Mike, on the, you know, the class, how it's multiple classes. And it's it's not spin. It is reality. You know, I'm a, you, you look at classes as two years, so 24 and 23 combined. You combine 22 and 23. You start combining these in two-year cycles as, as it goes because some guys are going to transfer, some are going to make it and whatnot. So they load it up, got a heck of a group last year. They're still getting some good football players this year. Yeah. They, they just lost out on some elite players. Yeah. yeah. One, of the, one of these days, Tim, we need to do like a – you remember when we went through the comments? I like I, I queued up all those com- YouTube comments and t- oh, yeah. we need to do one of those again, just like dispelling myths. All the time, I'll see. Oh, Notre Dame is a land five stars. Was it last week's show? We literally went through and I was like, "There's four five stars they've land at least ranked by one of the websites as a five yeah. star in the past four years." Yeah. I don't think twenty four seven and ESPN like on three actually ranks guys five stars for Notre Dame. The other sites haven't. Yeah. Except going back to the twenty twenty one class. ESPN and 24-7 haven't. Rivals had Blake Fisher as a five-star. And then Notre Dame had Sneed, Jagasaw. Wagner. And Wagner. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Cam Williams ends up one for on three. So um, it's interesting. It's interesting. All right, Tim. Yeah, th- 14 minutes in. You want to actually get some All topics right. on the show, for the show? Yeah, let's go for it. Folks, please do hit that thumbs up. Uh, Trash, I see your super chat. We'll get to that in a moment. Please hit that thumbs up, folks. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, for more content. Isaiah Canyon's decommitment time. I know we this is what this occurs Saturday, so it's Saturday a few days ago, and then he, he completes the flip to Georgia Tech on the third. I was it's funny on on Thursday after I saw Isaiah Canyon on my way home, I called up a buddy who covers Georgia Tech. We were just chatting it up. Neither of us had any idea what was around the corner um, with Isaiah Canyon flipping. And I really do think when I saw him that Thursday morning, it was already done. Like I it, like his his decommitment was was pretty much already done. Notre Dame didn't know about it. I didn't know about it, but I'm I'm pretty sure, sure that Canyon knew about it. So you know Georgia Tech. Real, real Georgia quick, Tech. I saw some tweets of guys posting on the message board. Like some Georgia Tech sites of like, uh, we we they, they had no idea. They're like, who's coming? Some Notre Dame guy? I mean, yeah, they there's dudes down in Atlanta had no clue either. Well, what are your initial thoughts on on this one, Tim? Oh, I was just like, what? Um, 
yeah, I mean, you got to take a 30 second pause, right? To, before you gather your thoughts, like, did he just have an official visit? Uh, now it's family with his mom. Dad, I mean, whoever uncle. is, it, yeah, someone doesn't like to fly, who's a big part of his life. It's mom. And, mom okay, they take a train Thursday. But anyway, it's, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was my first thing. Like, all right, there's plane trains and automobiles. Uh, I've driven cross country 20 times in my life. It's, it's, it's doable. Great, but, flick, uh, by the way. What's that? Great flick, plane trains and automobiles. Oh, yes. So you hear that, but I'm like, did they just, take an official visit. Did mom go? I mean, I have no, you know, I don't, mom didn't go. No. Oh, then there you go. So was that a red flag? Like every parent, cause they show the bus, right? Uh, whoever on Twitter and pictures, Kyle, Kyle Kelly's been at the thing, snapping pictures or videos. Yeah. The bus, you see all the parents, brothers, sisters, everyone getting off the bus. So I, you know, I had no idea who was with Isaiah, whether it was his you know, aunt or someone else. So who knows? But, uh, guess his mom didn't go and that ended up being a huge reason well yeah it's the distance distance i mean I, I know i was blown away number one it's like first off this is stucky's like hometown so is there's no wind of this like no one saw anyone at the local bakery getting a bagel tire shop. it's always the tire shop tim <laughs> the tire shop. no there's no scuttlebutt you know stucky's going down to get his you know his mom some medicine in two years He's, he's going to run into the canyons and what's going to happen. It's start thinking of all these things. And it's just like, how did they not know? When I say they, I'm talking about Notre Dame. Maybe they did. Maybe they thought nothing of it. Maybe it was just never talked about, which as I texted you, like they need to get that on the questionnaire from now on Do family members like to fly and uh, start getting this thing. Going. <laughs> That's I was, it was, and then how soon he com he committed to Georgia tech. It was, um, it, it, it's it's fascinating. It's you know I me. Mean? I it's the deep south, right? It's it's never easy for Notre Dame. And as soon as you get someone you like under the radar, before everyone jumps on him, and then he flips because family member doesn't want to fly. That was like wow. Well, yeah. It was in, it was an interesting Saturday morning with all. Yeah, that. I, I read an article from the George Tech Rival site where he said, "Listen, like I had the blessing to commit to Notre Dame, but you know." I, my family's just a lot more happier George Tech, so I mean I get it. My, my yeah. second re I like I have two two, two reaction here, Tim. One, this is a loss, right? Someone tweeted me, oh, Notre Dame pulled a scholarship. I'm like, no, no, no. Like Notre Dame is not happy about this. I don't think they're losing sleep. They're gonna go find another fine receiver. Like I, it, it's gonna be okay. I, I think Kenny is a, is a big time talent, but there are so many good receivers out there. Receiver is the easiest position to go find talent at. I mean, right? me you know, always talk about the top. If you're the number 39 guard in the country, <laughs> you're, that's that's good. Yeah. The number 39 wide receiver in the country is a dude. Is a dude, it's right? A dude. If you're talking like national rankings, I don't love national rankings because you're comparing a safety to a running back. Yeah. Like what's like how is one the number 290 and one's 289? But the equivalent, you know, of the number 39 receiver in the country it is much higher on a national ranking than like the number one guard mo most of the time, at least. Or may maybe that's all. Maybe I should say center, right? A, a center. Center, yeah. Exactly. Um, I mean, you and I have talked about this on many shows about just the history of Notre Dame recruiting with wide receivers, how many guys they've ranked in the 20s, the 30s, yeah. that, you know, at their position – that have gone to Notre Dame and been a star. It's because there's a thousand, thousand plus wide receivers alone. Cause everyone in America, three quarters of America is going spread four wide. It's all over the place. So you can find wide receivers. There's, I mean, they, I mean, there's dudes at Purdue, Illinois, what Vanderbilt, South Carolina, there's guys all over that are three stars locally that are under recruited, just like Isaiah Canyon was yeah. for crying out loud. So yeah, and a Tim lot of texted me, "Hey, go do another Caleb Smith," and that's what I wrote an article Seriously. today at blueandgold.com, uh, which we'll we'll, we'll kind of dive into a little bit um, soon. But yeah, go find another Caleb Smith. There's a yeah. kid from Chicagoland, I believe his name's Luke Williams, committed to is it Purdue? Is that the Purdue guy you just wrote about? I yeah, think? I was like, go oh, go after him, like. He plays safety, wide receiver. He plays the boundary. You have to take Johnson insurance. So that was my first take. Like, it's things, but it's not a major loss. The yeah. second one is how weird is recruiting these days? I mean, 
it's been weird, right? I think this is my 2014 was my first cycle, right? Um, you have Notre Dame targets going to Duke, Texas Tech, Georgia Tech. Elijah Rushing looks like he's about to commit to Arizona. Arizona recruiting is weird. Okay, it's just it's just getting weird. That's like it's not even all recruiting crazy. It's madness. Yeah, it's now it's just kind of weird. Yeah, it's um. No, it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, Notre Dame is someone even posted that like, yeah, we're losing a guy to Duke, Texas Tech. It's it's interesting. I mean, the Duke thing with Menke to me always made sense because Elko's been at AM for so long. Him pulling a guy out of Texas, he probably had a connection there. Miles is going to a Texas Tech. I love that athlete, hell of an athlete. But uh no, it is, it's wild. And now you're saying rushing is an error. When's he commit? Isn't it this Mark? week? Tomorrow. Jeez, tomorrow okay well then there you go yeah so if he doesn't go to oregon that's going to be hilarious he stays in basically to go play tucson university of arizona is a five-minute drive from south point it's yeah the road. yeah recruiting's just weird guys um <laughs> so uh wait yeah i can't wait for that comment so t- yeah university university of arizona gets more five stars in notre dame now great all right, so Tim, before we talk about Justin Scott, which I'm sure, sure. people wanted to discuss, let's go through a few comments. What do we got? Um, a couple super chats. Trash always comes in with the uh, with with some good ones. Does do do recruits committing early cause their ratings to drop, okay. or is it just bias? Hold on. How did the the Benny Powell guy was 1250? I think when he committed, he's in the 800s now. I'm just throwing out a name. So not that he's an elite of the elites and all that, but there's a dude that was in the 1200s. What is he, Mike? Is he in the 800s now? Didn't he move up? Like, yeah, he moved up. I, I just saw recently. He's 899. So yes, he's technically in the 800s. There you go. But there's a guy who moved up 300. Some. So is that a bump? Does that count? Yeah, Sean Sevillano was in the 800s, and now he's and at he 560 is. after he committed. Yes. So guys, I'm telling you, Prescott. By the way, Prescott was in the 600s. I, I I don't have an on me rivals or on three always ranked him high, but true. But I'm saying he was in the 600s of all of, of the industry. Oh, he was. He now was in the 300s. I think ESPN bumped. Yeah, ESPN put him as a. At one point, he was like six. No, he was. He was in the five 600s. Yeah, he was the omen for all my omen fans out there. Great. Uh, he was six six six. I think at one point, guys. So. I, I'm just you. You're just gonna have to trust me. You're not dropping like flies. Some yes, guys do because. You're, you're just going to have to trust me. The bias I personally have seen the most is when a player who's ranked kind of low commits to Notre Dame. I think these analysts go, oh, hmm. I, I didn't think he was that good, but Notre Dame's taking I, I should he, I, he should get a closer look. I really don't think committing early cause rankings would drop. Now, it's not just that, but if that kid – commits let's take brennan vernon for example because i think this is a good one brennan vernon i think if he went out to more things publicly oh, and yeah. played in a defense at mentor that catered to his strengths more i think he may have ended up higher rank but the thing is we saw him once and it was um going into his junior year i think or maybe yeah, he was going really? into his senior year brennan vernon we saw him in would have been spring of 2021 um and then we saw him again. I didn't see him really again until the All-Star game. I went to a game that year, and then it was the January All-Star game after he had I, signed. I had like, he didn't go to anything. No. He's not doing any interviews. So, like, sometimes if you're out of the public eye yeah, and then yeah. you don't have a ton of huddle available, like maybe you're not even putting stuff on huddles, you don't have stats available. I agree. Yeah, like I, the, the lack of data can hurt you when you compare that to players who do have a lot of data out there. I think that can hurt you, or maybe it's not that it can hurt you, but it helps others more who are doing it, which causes you then to slide because if others moving up and you're not, you're sliding. There's, um, I mean, Cam Williams. I think when Cam Williams, when he committed, he may have only been, you know, he may have been top 100. I don't, or maybe in the hundreds, low hundreds. And now he's borderline five star Yeah, on, on so many things. So there's a guy that is, more than doubled his upward movement. So for every Cam Williams, I know people like to use other guys, but Cam Williams is a guy who once he committed, he went upward. So it, it happens both ways. 
Uh, this guy says, how is the National Defense Player of the Year, National High School Buckus, not a five-star? Who cares if these kids do ex exhibitions in schools, comps? That's ridiculous. Okay, two things. Notre Dame offers guys all the time based on camps, T-shirt and shorts camps. All of the time. So you can't say that the camps don't matter when – think about the NFL Combine, right? What they do in the NFL Combine – is a huge part of where they get drafted. So we can't say that things – like, I'll see this on Twitter all the time. How did someone get dropped 100 spots when there hasn't been football? Because there's combines and stuff. Like, these things are real. Like, it's this is very important in, in scouting, not only for, you know, for college, but in the NFL as well. And then the first thing – look, I'm not going to debate whether Drake Bone should be a five-star or not, but you can't take, like – the national player of the year and the high school butt kiss thing, those were subjective things from someone to give him that. You can't take that subjective thing and say that the the ranking, sh that's also a subjective thing. Like to, to prove one subjective thing to go to the ranking, like that doesn't make any sense. It, it does. It doesn't. I mean, if you want to go stats um, or testing numbers, sure. But the high, the butt kiss thing, Tom Lemming has a big part of that. Tom Lemming's the biggest Notre Dame fan there is. You know, like, you know, Notre Dame guys will win the buckets all the time. You know, like, so yeah, it, it's four. just not – that's it's yeah, you can't take awards in, me, in this. I mean, otherwise Tim Tebow would have been the best NFL quarterback ever. I mean, look what he did in college. And, and real quick, off of – I mean, skills camp is one of my favorite Notre Dame football players of all time is – uh is Rocky Boyman. I mean, it's his, his recruitment is famous out of, out of Ohio had no offers, goes to Notre Dame camp, blows up. They're like, who, you know, who in the world, who in the heck is this guy? He was, you know, the, the, the 1998, what Teddy Rezac basically back then where they're like, God, we got to offer this guy. So, and he ends up being, you know, playing the NFL six, seven years and being an absolute stud at Sam outside linebacker for Notre Dame for a few years. So it, I mean, get offers at camps that, that happens all over the place yeah i mean deuce knight just got offered at the alabama camp a couple of weeks ago they had a camp they had not offered him obviously he's got film it's, he's got offers same thing they wanted to see him work out live they saw him live offered him there you go yeah same thing with the clemson quarterback this year who just committed who had the notre dame offer i'm talking 20 2025 so guys get offered at camps all the time yeah and he cheats yet cheat sheet says Collie won the buckets in high school and could have mean four reps. I, I so again the, the rankings, the awards, they're like they don't mean crap when you get to, to college. Like you gotta play ball. So but really good super chat trash and another one. This is our favorite thing to talk about to him is commentators. Something I don't like with NBC commentators is the mention of Notre Dame being tight end or a uh, tight end university or O line university because kids hear that and they watch. Does that hurt recruiting? It's not hurting recruiting uh, 2025 with who I think is one of the top two or three tight ends and Nate Roberts. You got one of my favorite tackles, that monster, but Owen uh, Strebrig out of um, Wisconsin's a monster. I don't think it's hurting those guys. Uh, I, I know he's probably saying wide receivers and whatnot. So wide um, receivers is a different animal. Um, it's a, it's a different animal. Those you know, and it, it, God, there's a stat I saw, I mean, with Notre Dame, out, you know, last year was an anomaly because they had to, they had no wide receivers last year. That's why they ran the ball so much and they used two tight ends so much yet in the, in the previous few years be, uh, before that, Notre Dame has been throwing the ball more than Georgia and Alabama, which it doesn't seem like it, but they have like uh, even, even Sam, uh, Sam Hartman, who's coming here, everyone acts like Sam Hartman threw the ball 80% of the time. No, they were 50-50 most of the times in throwing run pass. So Wake Forest was not this gunslinger five wide offense with Hartman. But um it's a it's an interesting thing. I I will say I, I get what Trash is saying because kids see that the perception is well, Notre Dame only throws to the tight ends. Yes, because that's all they've had, basically. You know, the year before it was uh oh my god, the Austin, Kevin Austin. I mean, he has 900 yards receiving. Chase Claypool after that, on and on and on, going all the way back to Golden Tate, Michael Floyd, Stovall. I mean, there's been so many great wide receivers at Notre Dame. Just it ha it is interesting how um, 
it's it's been a tough spot to get some yep. of the elite elite guys. And I see what he's saying with that. Yep. Trash, really do appreciate the super chat and all of the good questions. All right, Sam, I'm telling you, I, I was talking to uh, a colleague who covers Ohio State today. And he was like, man, I'm still shocked about Justin Scott committing to Ohio State, especially in the in the timing and manner that he did. When you saw this news, what was your first reaction, Tim? Justin Scott, five star from Chicago, St. Ignatius, picking the, picking uh, the Buckeyes. Um, well, that's interesting. The RPM still has Miami at seventy one percent. Right, that's that's I know, I know, it I was <laughs> what it was. Yeah, I don't. My, uh, you know what? Mike, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't. I didn't. You know, I didn't throw nothing against the wall. I didn't get you know fire sixteen guys and start it new. And I mean. It, he wasn't coming to Notre Dame from what it sounds like. I mean, the guy didn't visit. So he, he, didn't, take, he didn't, yeah, he didn't take any official visits. And then when you listen to his quotes afterwards and you read the articles, it was Notre Dame's not even mentioned. So Notre Dame was, okay, it's there. It's in the Midwest. I, it's almost like, you know, Notre Dame fans and obviously everyone wants him because of his ranking, where he's from, things of that nature. But if this guy's from Nashville, Tennessee, and he goes, oh, he's a you know, he blip on the radar. Okay, sounds good. What a shock. Fact is, uh, as we know, Mike, it's it's he's from Chicago, so it's blown out of proportion. Like that's Notre Dame's backyard. He's down the street. We got to get these guys all the time. Well, Michigan, Ohio State have tons of guys from Illinois, so it's not like they're not allowed to go to those schools. They have plenty of dudes that are starting for them. You know that over the years that are from there. So him going there, I wasn't. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't whatsoever. It, you know, you wanted to stay close to home. Well, it's Columbus, Ohio. It's Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's South Bend, Indiana. It's okay. A couple hour drive uh, farther away is what it is. So um, obviously the scuttlebutt had been Michigan recently and then went to Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to say? Yeah. I, and speaking of the Michigan point, quote, yeah, I'm Justin Scott. I was ready to commit to Michigan. So old Mike Singer, when he did say he's here in Michigan buzz, I wasn't totally wrong. And then we visit Ohio State. Um, and the thing that pushed them over the top was getting coached by uh, by Larry, Larry Johnson. I don't know a ton about Larry Johnson. I just know that defense line recruits love him. Yeah. He's... Um, and as I said in the video earlier this week of Darren Bridger, like Larry Johnson just out recruited out Washington here. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's a name. He. I mean, he's a name. He's at Penn State forever. Had tons of dudes at Penn State. Great high. I believe he's a big time high school football coach. And then Penn State brought him on to coach D line. What 12, 15 years. And he's been at Ohio State for a long time, coaching those guys up. So he's a name, and he's got a lot of uh, resume behind him, so to speak. So when he talks, kids listen, and um, and you roll from there. And it's. It, it's Ohio State, so it's it's a big, it's an elite of the elite programs. They're up there in the higher echelon. They got dudes going to the NFL all the time, and and it really sounds like, you know, as you just said, got out recruited, so to speak. But you know, it sounds like he thought more about the NFL than he did anything else. He sounds like when you read his quotes, where the whole thing about Notre Dame and you know and going to college, the four for 40, whatever you want to say and all that doesn't sound like any of that really, you know, mattered to him, so to speak. So, which is, um, which, which is interesting. So, and that's why I try not to get too upset because Notre Dame wasn't one of the final two hats, you know, were they even, I mean, I've heard you say they, they were third, they were third, you can say third, I'll say five. Cause they didn't even, they didn't get official visit. You know, I mean, Okay, is, it, is he going to go to Georgia or Notre Dame is the final two? All right, he wasn't. It was it was one of the three Midwest schools. Yeah, it was one of the three Midwest, Midwest, so they might as well have been eight. All right, so it doesn't sound like they were not going. Um, he wasn't going to Notre Dame, but do they have a chance to flip him? Can they get him for a visit? What's that going to be like? A guy committed going to Ohio State game for a visit. He's going to see thirty thousand people in scarlet red. In that stadium, he's gonna wear you know one of the Buckeye, you know, the nuts uh necklaces for Notre Dame. What would that be like? Is he high fiving Ohio State fans as he's going through the Notre Dame walk with the recruits? Oh boy. Uh yeah, this is a yeah. this is an interesting recruiting, but but you're right, Mike. It's for all the visits. He just real quick on that, he 
he vis- he went to a game in 2021. Didn't even go to a game last year, but he went to a game at Michigan, Ohio State. Fall the visits. All the visits. You know, he had a great summer visit. Obviously, all the coaches recruited the heck out of him. As soon as the Stanford game ended, they hit the road, all that good stuff. Comes up for a spring game or a spring practice, excuse me. But seems like everyone else was always in, in the know and in the mention. So, All right. We need to dispel something. I have seen this comment. What do we got? So many times. Is it true Golden never visits Scott? That is a rumor. That's false. I don't know who is saying this. I reported. I think it's twice Al Golden went to the school. And so I have a picture. I have literally photo proof. There's him and Reese. There's Al Golden and Tommy Reese at yeah. Justin Scott's basketball game. This was January 27th. So I, I mean, I, I don't. I don't know if someone wants to cross reference the uh, analyze the wall and <laughs> and everything like that and that that fire alarm on the wall like yeah, what's compare the that to the the gymnasium to see if this is a, a, a real photo and then maybe it was Photoshop. I don't understand why people are saying that Golden never visits. No, it's on the message board. It's been ton like Golden like, never just, talked to him, like, never called him. I'm like, what? I, I, I don't know. Like we just want like it's just we just got to blame. Blame Al Golden. I don't know. Hey, there's as as bad as you wanted him to go to Notre Dame, where he's from, all that good stuff. I get it. You know, the end the end of the day, he's more interested in the other Midwestern power, you know, and still a place for him for his parents to go and whatnot, you know, close to home. You know, it's it's an easy drive. I've done it many times. So um all right, Tim, we got our photo proof. You ready for this? Oh boy, what do you got? Another one? Right, hold on, hold on. Okay. Just give me a second. <laughs> Don't tell me. Are you Photoshop? All right. Quick. So here's our fa- sorry, podcast audience. I always tell you to go blue and gold. All right. Do you see the wall? Right. You see that? You even see like the little double. The yeah. Little the little wood, wood plane. Does that not look the same? Uh. <laughs> right there. So there you have it, folks. Al Golden, breaking news, breaking news went. See, look, look what I Googled. St. Ignatius, Chicago St. Ignatius basketball gym. There it is, folks. Okay. Can you please stop asking me if Al Golden went to the high school? Because there he is. Yeah. And like you said, anyone, I mean, in, the, anyone in the YouTube comments want to you want to talk about this? Oh, well, this picture was from three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. But you're right. It's uh, I mean, you do the follow the coaches on the recruiting trail features when they're out recruiting in January and during, you know, April, May. And you're, you post all that stuff all the time. So it was well documented that the whole staff went down there in January. That's yeah, what got all the time. Reese, Walsh. Scott was so excited to, to go to Notre Dame. So, yeah, I mean, that's the interesting. Let's back up with Justin real quick. You go back to January where. I mean, I, I've said on this show a thousand times, I thought he was going to go to Notre Dame because he was ready to commit then. He was just taking a pause, reassuring wrote, a few things. and I wrote in an article um, Monday, I was like, I think it was titled something like Reflections on Scott mm-hmm. to Ohio State from a Notre Dame writer. And I wrote in there, and I knew someone was going to call me out on it. I was like, he was very close to committing Notre Dame in January, but also I don't think he really loved Notre Dame that much. And people were like, how can those two things be true? And my answer was, yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for you, but I really do believe both things are true. Uh, so is it, let me ask you this, Mike, and for obviously the, all, all the fans watching and watching back later is like, is it, I mean, did we want Justin Scott to do this? And then him and Han and July, August take trips. I mean, it's, you know what? He's probably going to do that. You know, had he committed, would he have stuck with it? I mean, geez, I mean, there's talk all over the internet, Twitter and all that. Like he's already talking about, oh, I still need to do this visit, that visit. I mean, you've even posted like they're still trying to get him up for the Ohio State game. That's the hot thing. And he may take a Michigan game visit. So it's really? like hey, me. I saw that on the, you know, because on three could go on the message board. Yeah, so yeah. it's like they're still going to not give up. Like why would exactly. no give up on Justin Scott? There was a comment, I think, from a guy named Michael. Great name, by the way. I'm scrolling up to find it. Michael, I hope I find this real quick. Do, 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 do. Well, basically, it was something to the effect of where does Notre Dame go from here um, with uh, defensive line recruiting with Scott to Ohio State? And um, 
Michael, I'm sorry, I, I think your name was Michael. At least I, um, I apologize. Uh, I can't pop, I can't find a pop on the screen. Um, you know, with, with him to Ohio State and rushing likely to Arizona, where does Notre Dame go for here for defense line recruiting? The line right now is that they're just going to keep recruiting Scott, and that that's it because they wanted four and they got four, and anything after that is kind of that too good not to take category. I don't know. I still think they might just go get a fifth. Like defensive line is one of those positions that you can project, right? Like you can see what this guy will be down the future. Um, you just get some freak show like a Cole Mullins. It's like, oh, he's playing linebacker, but like you can see his length, athleticism, and we see him projecting. I end up, I think they'll probably end up with something like that if they don't flip Scott. But well, my, that's why I, I actually I took a note earlier when I was driving home and getting ready is. Yeah, you know, I knew we were going to talk about Canyon and Scott. Is those are the two like toughest? You know, going back to one of the gentleman's questions about the MNC commentators and O line, D line, or O line tight end. You about how hard he's basically saying how hard it is to recruit wide receivers. It is. It is. Lou Samoji has written articles upon articles in his history about the white whale, meaning D line recruiting. It has always been tough for Notre Dame to land guys. It just is. This is not the first time they've lost out on guys. There's a long line of guys that they've lost out on over the years on the D line. And then to your point right now, Mike, I was thinking a few hours ago, like these are the two positions Notre Dame needs to oversign. I mean, the go- you only need 85 guys when camp starts. There is no signing line. I don't know if anyone saw that the NCAA announced, you know, you could oversign again. They're extending that. You don't have to just be at 25. So guys could sign 34 players. So the goal is to be at 85 and camp starts. Well, you don't need this until another year from now. So why not oversign? Because they are just get they've lost out of Morian Walker to Michigan, who now will start the corner. How funny is that? CJ Williams. You only have one wide receiver in that class. The famous Jordan Johnson class is a train wreck at wide receiver. You know, and that would look great on paper. Oh, it's unbelievable on paper. People, oh, they don't recruit receivers. Well, they did. They had Xavier Watts and Jordan Johnson. Two elite wide receivers. They just they didn't play at Notre Dame. Watts obviously got moved. And the same thing with the D line. I, I said months ago, you got to sign five or six. You got to replenish, keep replenishing it. And for some reason, Notre Dame always sticks. Oh, we only want three. Take five. You know, we only want four D linemen. Take six because you just don't know. And I, at least for me, as a longtime Notre Dame fan, those two positions have been extremely hard. Corner was like that for ages. And now corners kind of really deep, which which is awesome, you know, for the future. But wide receiver, you got to go out and find another one. You can't just sign. Yeah, they're people. good. Yeah, yeah they're going to take another receiver. And then yeah. D line, man, you just you just never know with D line because yeah. what if Riley Mills goes out and tears it up this year and he goes pro early and Patella doesn't come back? These guys don't come back for a fifth. You just need bodies, and I think those two positions for me oversign. And if I was at Notre Dame offices, man, I would oversign the living heck out of those two spots. Right. I want to address that. Yeah. Um, but folks, you'll just have to hang on for a second. So I'm going to let you get a, a sip of water. Um, yeah, we've got to pay some bills. And let's hear from our friends over at Rogue Shop, the husband and wife outfit. As Mr. Rogue and his wife, Shar are craft cannabis farmers who specialize in small batch, sustainable plant medicine, a true holistic type of small business. They farm and grow everything themselves. Um, I, you know, I don't know if they're farming these, uh, adorable earrings, but we're gonna have to get Tim a pair so he can rock those in, in next week's show. Uh, for again, folks, farm and grow everything themselves and do everything by hand. Go check them out at rogueshop.com, R O G U E shop.com, selling everything from CBD, THC edibles, tincture, smokables, bath salts, pain creams, topicals, vapes, candles, soaps, and more. Head over to the site. Jump on a live chat where you can see in the bottom left of the screen to interact with Mr. Rogue and Char to answer any questions that you might have. Again, folks, rogueshop.com. Uh, head to the website. If you chat with the owners, let them know that Mike Singer from Blue and Gold sent you and use that promo code Blue and Gold for 10% off your order. I was looking through my notes, Tim, because the question of why doesn't Notre Dame just sign a lot more guys. I asked, does Notre Dame source that? And I think it really gets to dive into it too much. I'm looking at my notes. Notre Dame's not going to take kids just to take kids. So I think if it's a situation where they can get 30 and it's 30 guys that they really, really want, they'll do it, but they're not just going to take 
you know, players. I think. Well, let me ask you this then. How do you find that sauce gardener? How do you find that guy who's ranked the 1200th corner and you take a chance at him? You know, maybe. which I think that's the, if they find that guy, they take a chance on him. That's someone they believe in, you know? Yeah, I got you. I got yeah, you. like a Sean sure. Pavilano. Sure. Um, Rezac, you know, obviously. Rezac. Cole, Mull- yeah. Cole Mullins, you know, also had offers from USC and, you know, like he had some big time offers like Sean Sevlano, Michigan. Like, look at his top, or his top four is Notre Dame, Ohio State, Auburn, Miami. It's like yeah. even some of these lower sure. ranked guys are pretty good. Oh, right. like Teddy Rezac, Nebraska offered him right before he committed to Notre Dame. I mean, like, you know. No, I know. I know. No, no, I, I agree. It's just, yeah. It, it, and I see what the Notre Dame staff says. We're like, yeah, we're not sure if he could play here. I get it. It, I get it. Those are at least two spots, and then that's where you just got to constantly attack. And Notre Dame has had really good success with grad transfers. We always got to yeah. remember that. Look at the guys they brought this year, last year, on and on and on. They've had really good success. So uh, you just I, keep keep pounding that. Yeah, I think this was the question. It wasn't Mitch. It was, it was or excuse me, it wasn't Michael's Mitch. Um, that you know, I mentioned earlier about the the D line recruit move forward. Just found that comment. A couple more super chats, Tim. This show is really breezing by. I've still got sure. a couple more things to talk about. N. E. Davis, he he's back. It's good to see you, my friend. Are you telling me there's not a single five star that is willing to bet on Freeman over NIL slash pay for play? Does he need to actually win something to have a pull again? Yeah. <sighs> Notre Dame has signed three five-star guys under Marcus Freeman, right? Jalen Sneed, Charles Jagasaw, Emil Wagner. And Emil Wagner, you know, that was he, – he committed to Notre Dame when Marcus Freeman and – or excuse me, when, when Brian uh, Kelly and Jeff Kuhn were still at Notre Dame. But Emil Wagner High School, Wayne and Hubert Heights, same high school as Marcus Freeman. So Freeman – I mean, so that's three five-stars that Notre Dame did – sign because Marcus so again they're, they're signing five stars and you guys want to tell me all the time how ridiculous all the rankings are for CJ Carr not being a five star so if you guys rank CJ Carr's a five star and Cam Williams as a five star there's two five stars in this class alone <laughs> so I mean come on no I hear you and uh oh, yeah to the super chat Tim no it's exactly I mean I, I see what you know what you know what he's saying take a bet and that's that's true. I mean, no matter it, I I talk about that, you know, you know, with some of my Notre Dame friends a bunch. It's like this is still, I guess I'll use the term an experiment. I mean, whatever you want to call it, it's 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 a it's a young coach. It's a young guy who, you know, ten years ago before he was at Notre Dame, he was coaching at Kent State, correct? Purdue. That's where he got his training ground at those mighty powers. So and he's worked his way up slowly, and now it goes back to Jack Swarbrick's um, great interview. Uh, there, there's interviews out there. He did one with – I was just Googling this the other day, just trying to do some Marcus Freeman re, rehashing when he got hired. And Jack Swarbrick did a long interview with Pete Sampson talking about – yeah, they, uh, Pete Sampson asked, is it a risk? He's like, heck, yeah, it's a risk. But it's one I think is going to pay off, and that's going back to that reasoning why he used Dabo – Sweeney and his experience, you know, Dabo people forget him with I think six and seven his second year. Then it started to roll after that. So, um, not saying Freeman's going six and seven this year, but it, it it is a chance, and this is a bet. So when you got these five stars, say Justin Scott, Justin Scott sitting there, it's like, do I take a chance on Freeman or do I know what I could get at Ohio State? And that and that happens. And then the next thing, you know, I know we constantly hear these five, five, five stars. But Mike, where are most of these five stars down south? And those guys down south, they're going to stay in the SEC and play football. That's where the best football is. It's home base. Their entire family could go to the games, all that stuff. And that's just what has happened in SEC country the last 20 years. And during this period, Notre Dame has stunk most of the time. They just have. So it is a it's a bet. It's a great question. And this uh, here, Ned Davis is the ultimate during the Freeman era is it's getting these guys to take a chance on Freeman and Freeman. I've seen some uh, uh, comments in the chat. Got to go out and win, go out and win. And when you win, it starts to change that switch, get that Marshall, the Stanford, the horrible loss to Oklahoma state and the Fiesta Bowl, all these things start to add up and you get them out of your, get them out of your mouth and you start, man, all right, now we see what this guy's doing. So 
long-winded answer, but it's a great question. Yep, any devs appreciate super chat. Uh, and then one more from Trash. Kirk Herb Street once said on ESPN that kids, quote unquote, don't love the game anymore. And being NFL focused, is that true? Opinions? Sure, it's true. That's 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 why guys are going where they go, and guys always talk about the NFL and that is their focus. That is their focus. Yet the numbers are astonishing. How many guys don't make the NFL and don't get a shot? How many? Just because you're five star doesn't mean you're automatically going to the NFL. Well, there's a lot of bust of those guys over the years. So, but you know what? We're so focused on them. And when you think five stars, what is it? It's 30, 40 guys, basically. And like I said, so if you got 30, 40 guys and th- you know, two thirds of them are in, out of the deep South where Notre Dame struggles to recruit anyway. So let's quit focusing on those guys and go get, which the gentleman talked about earlier. Make sure you get Drake Bowen. Who's the best guy in class. Go get a Jeremiah Love who's got half the SEC offering him. Go get Christian Gray. Go get a bunch of these guys. Cam Williams, on and on and on. And that's – you You could win a lot of football games with those guys. You just can't. Okay. Sorry, I had to put a couple – Oh, no, I got you. On, on my uh, end oh, for our streaming app, you uh, – someone's arguing. These two guys are arguing about stupid stuff. So I, I put two guys and it literally says timeout. Put yeah, you here yeah. timeout. And talking about players real quick, talking about five stars, it's like I'm looking at my notes here of this year's class. You got Aeneas Williams. Aeneas Williams committed so early, we forget Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama offered that guy. Yeah. So, you know, is he not a five-star? He's not one of the top 30, but he's good enough for pretty much the top three programs in America to want him. Yeah. Daniel Reynolds, uh, how can we never get a chance to five any stars? Just just replay. Just just we, we talked about this. But once again, um, what is a five star? Where do you want five stars? I think we always lose focus on that. Do you want to get the five star out of Alabama? You think Notre Dame's going to pull that guy away from Nick Saban and what Nick Saban's built? I mean, are you going to get that guy out of Atlanta? Are you going to get Caleb Downs, who was my number one player in the country last year? He's probably going to start at Alabama this year as a true freshman. He's unbelievable. He is. He's the guy that bam. Here's he could he could walk at Notre Dame blindfolded right now and start replace Kyle Hamilton. He's the, from the same state, all these things, all, all the recruiting pitches Notre Dame used at him. But he's like, it's still got to take, going back to the, the super chat, it's still got to take a, a chance with Freeman or do I go to Saban and Smart, which I know what I'm going to get. And that's, that is tough to do right now at Notre Dame until you go win a ton of games. Uh, Trash, really do appreciate the super chat. We had a couple from Miguel. Um, so Miguel put one without a comment. So if you guys ever do this on accident where you like post a super chat that don't have a comment, right here. Um, you, you know, just, just drop a comment. You don't have to drop another super chat. Although I really do appreciate it, Miguel. But yeah, if you just drop a super chat and you don't have the comment with it, just post a normal comment and I'll, I'll see that and notice. Um, Miguel really do appreciate it. He says, is it more convenient to pull in a bunch of four stars and get the big time player in portal um, like an, like an F.A.? Like, oh, like a free agent. I think it's more beneficial for the Irish. What do you think on this, Tim? Yeah, I mean, they're going to go to the portal and get what they need during that for that season. This year, they needed a nickel, got a nickel. Needed another DB, got the kid out of uh, Rhode Island, uh, Carter. You know, needed a, a strong side defensive end. They got, you know, Baptiste from Ohio State, needed a quarterback because, you know, Freeman wasn't happy with the quarterback room. Needed a court, you know, on and on. And, that, and that's what they've done the last few years. I mean, Notre Dame has gone out and gotten solid corners over the last decade a handful of times. When they need a corner, they go get a corner. So, and they've had a couple of those guys. So, it's, yeah, I mean, if that's the portal as a free agent getting those guys, it's not going to stop. Notre Dame is going to keep getting probably five, eight or so of these a year, real quick. So, and some, uh, and, and real quick on a comment, some guy said I said Caleb Downs was replacing Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, after Hamilton leaves, Caleb Downs replaces him. That's what I meant. Okay. In recruiting, not like yeah, he's replacing him. You know, they if Downs and Hamilton were in the same secondary, they're both starting. How's that? Everybody really appreciate the super chats tonight. This has been a, a fantastic show, and I knew it would be. I knew it would be. Really appreciate all the support and super chats, and, and then you know get get a fun one, um, like this from BC it says I applaud you for having the patience to read the comments. There are a couple couple escaped lunatics in here. Listen. We don't get uh, a salary, you know, and, and make any money without you escape lunatics to watch our shows and read our articles and stuff. So we appreciate you escape lunatics. 
I know sometimes I, I seem like I'm, I'm yelling at you guys, but I, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Like I'm not doing this show, um, you know, as like a, an echo chamber and tell you guys what you want to hear. I'm going to give my thoughts like I always do. And if that lines up with what you guys think, great. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give my thoughts. You know, Tim, I was, uh, Tim, do you ever, uh, scroll the app reddit i'm guessing you, you're not a reddit guy are you every now and then i mean google. i know the, the, the app and, and whatnot yeah. Yeah. i mean if you google search something the reddit know, are the best it always goes to reddit there's always a there's someone at reddit's talking about it so i've done that many times yeah i love reddit and, and i was scrolling reddit last night and the notre dame football reddit popped up as like a suggested one and it was something about Isaiah Canyon, and I scrolled it, and people are like, just rap, just just roasting Mike Singer. I was like, Whoa. hey, if they're talking about you, you must be doing something right. There you, you know? go. So, uh, yeah, there you go. What was that about? I, you know, Canyon leaving, and so uh, I, I honestly don't know, but okay. I know a lot of people are talking about the Mike Singer curse that I went and saw Canyon, and he decommits. But, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Well, that's those right. two things weren't. Uh, weren't related. Yeah, something tells me Isaiah Canyon was thinking about that before you went yeah, down um, and watched him out of camp. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure that uh that that was pretty much done. Singer is always so diplomatic, BC says. You know. I'll say diplomatic is in there's there's two sides to everything. I think the you know, the overreaction, the fire bombing, the you know, I am stunned we haven't seen fire you know, all the coaches in the chat tonight. So that's I yeah. It's diplomatic. Sometimes you have to speak some reality, and at least with the Justin Scott thing, Listen, that's what I looked at it. If when Drew Pine stinks in a game, and I come on the show, and I'm like, it's not it's like it's guys. Like, let's put this in perspective. I'm not a favorite, but when it, you know, if Sam Hartman goes out and throws seven touchdowns against Navy, and everyone's saying, "Oh, we're winning the screw the the national championship, we're winning the Super Bowl." I'm going to put you guys, give you, you know, put you guys in your place a little bit, you know? Yeah. People need to go rewatch our Stanford post game show. Um, how bad Pine was that night. And, uh, was, yeah. it, was it you or Goolsby? You couldn't say he threw it, could, he couldn't even throw it 40 yards. It was me. He like, throw throws it for like 48 or something. No, it wasn't 48, but, but, you, but you did show me. You did show me. I think it was 41 and a half. It wasn't diplomatic to be like, that was fun. Now, did you still make your point that I can't throw the, the ball far? Sure. But were you wrong factually? Yes, you were wrong. Actually, yes. Okay. Who's the uh, average I, mean, I, I think we are. Okay. Tim, you know, last week I was like, listen, I need 60 seconds from you for oh. – I need one week well, – every show I want a 60-second sound bite from Tim Hyde to post on all the socials. Here we right? go. Um, let me actually pop up the one from last week, right? I want to show you how neat this looks. Okay. Just hang tight, hang tight, everybody. Oh, yeah, okay, exactly. I need to know what I'm I need to sprout this week. What who's the quarterback in 2024? Right. Is that right, it? Just, just look at this. I tweeted oh. how badly does Notre Dame need to make the college football playoffs? Coach Timmy Hideways in. I don't think he retweeted it because he doesn't love me. Um, and then look, I you you play it, and like there's like the the vertical full screen of me love it. laying it out. I'm I look like I'm wearing the same shirt from last week. I might be. And I, I, I'm giving the intro. We cut to Tim Hyde. Right. Look how, look how professional this looks. You cut to Sam Hartman. Sorry. I like the video, audience. I like the video in cuts. I like that. Yeah. So. Pro day. So yeah. Pro day throwing the ball to Mike Mayer. You know, so, you know, and then later, you know, we, we cut back to him doing a drill and then we, you know, cut back to Tim. So the, you know, that's a professional I'm setup. Or is that Hartman? I'm sorry. Oh. That was Pine, right? Or Hartman? You're such a troll, Tim. <laughs> Where's Goolsby? <laughs> Goolsby is. Uh, I think we're doing a show with Goolsby this weekend. Okay, um, no, but I'm just saying. I, you know, I was. Uh, that would have been one of his comments. Okay, so with all that being said, we're about to go to one of those right now. Okay. All right. So. All right, we're gonna go to the optimism topic. All right, are you ready to answer a 60 second soundbite? Now the question we haven't started this yet. This is something that we usually would record like yeah, after the it. show, but nowadays I'm like, you know what? What we, you know, we just the live stream got to see it first, so this is very rehearsed, and you guys just get to see how the sausage is made. Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Right, time, I'm going to ask you: Are there good reasons to stay optimistic about Notre Dame recruiting? And you get, you know, about 50 seconds to answer. You got it? Ooh, man, this I'm going to get torn apart for this one. Here we go. 
All right. You ready? Sure. <clears throat> Over the weekend, Notre Dame lost commitments from – nope, that's not it because they only lost one commitment. All right. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. finished – All right. You say third for the other – Aaron Stack. Aaron, my, Hartman is a Mike Singer looking like. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Susan, I see your super chat. I'm going to re record this real quick again. Okay, take two. Notre Dame had some recent bad news on the recruiting trail. Isaiah Canyon decommitting from the Fighting Irish and then flipping his pledge to Georgia Tech and five-star defensive lineman Justin Scott committing to Ohio State over Notre Dame. Tim, is are there good reasons to stay optimistic about Notre Dame on the recruiting trail? I would say yes, because obviously you got uh, Coach Freeman and his work ethic. You got the recruiting staff and what these guys have been doing basically the, the last two years. When you look at 22 and 23, over 70 percent blue chip those two years, which is going to pay off dividends here in the next couple of years. It's still a solid class this year. And you've said it a lot, Mike. And I think the senior thing people forget is your headlining of this class is C.J. Carr. And that is one of the biggest things moving forward. Cam Williams, an elite wide receiver, something Notre Dame has, has, has struggled in years past. So, yes, uh, stay positive. Keep, keep looking forward. And you know what? There's still a couple of big fish that uh, Marcus Freeman could close in. Uh, possibly have a third straight top 10 class here in 2024. Uh, I don't know if that was under a minute, but I'm giving you a round of applause. I can always splice a couple of things to save some time. Hey, what was that? A minute five? Uh, I th yeah, I want to say it was. I, I, gave, I, gave, I, yeah. I can I can I can clean it up. I can clean right, it up. Good to go. So what do we got? Super chat. Who's the? Okay, who's our next commit? Susan dropping a ten. Appreciate you, my friend. How about I give a prediction? Okay. How about I say August fifth. Will be Deuce Knight. How's that? Hmm. I don't know. That's just he's coming down to the. You could talk about that coming down to the barbecue. He's talked many times. He wants to do it in the summer before his junior season. Be that headliner like CJ Carr was. I don't know, Mike. That's that's my prediction. He'll probably he'll probably won't commit, but I'm just who knows, right? He's coming. Okay. It's a huge visit, by the way, is it not? It is. There, it's a pretty big recruiting weekend. Um, you know, we report at Blue and Gold before the show. Owen Streebig will be there. Um, I haven't even posted this on the message board yet, so you'll, you know, don't don't tell the board yet. Jerome Bettis Jr. will be there. There's another commit candidate. To answer Susan's question, here's who I'm gonna go with. I'm going Gerby. Okay. I I'm hope. going Gerby. He wants to decide in August. All right, good. That's around the corner. So I could see it being Gerby Lambert. One of my sources told me recently was Notre Dame versus not okay. So we know the top four is Notre Dame, BC, Harvard, Ohio State. Unofficial top four. You'd think it's Notre Dame, Ohio State. No, I don't think so. You would think Notre Dame Boston College, the local school. Wow. How about Notre Dame Harvard battle? <laughs> not I mean, really I know good. Harvard's also, you know, in the state schools. Um so I think like so the comments about um the kids don't love the game, right? Whatever that comment was with Kirk Herb Street. Let me find it real quick. Yeah, that's been out there before. Uh again, Susan, really appreciate the 10. Um just give me a second, guys. Just give me a second. You guys are just commenting so much that uh old singer can't even take takes them so long to, sc to scroll up to find it. Okay, uh Kirk Herb Street once said on ESPN, the kids don't love the game anymore. When I grew up, what did I do every Saturday? I just watched college football. Like that's that's what you did, you know. Nowadays, I think there's just a lot more to distract kids. There's a lot more things to do, so I think that's part of it. But just be careful in criticizing, you know, the the love of the game thing when Notre Dame's one of their biggest pitches is has nothing to do with football, right? It's it's academics. Yeah. So just just I would just say, hey, let's 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 think about you know getting on the kids about. Oh, they don't love the game with Gerby Lambert might choose Notre Dame in large part due to those academics. And that hasn't, you know, nothing to do with, with Notre Dame football it has something to do with, of course, a Notre Dame, but it's outside the specific football program. So just, just a note, just something to think about. Yeah. yeah I'd, I'll take that. I'll take that commitment. He's been one of my favorite players. So I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that to happen. So we could, 
uh, go public and talk yeah. about him with everyone. I yeah, just, three minutes. Yeah, th- th- sorry, three minutes. Leo Houston Linehan says uh, no mention of Gerby. There's your mention of Gerby. You yeah, know. no mention because we started talking about losing a wide receiver, losing a D lineman that are huge positions. So yeah, if if you know, when Gerby commits, knock on wood, that happens. We'll talk plenty about him. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll do a whole Gerby Lambert special. Oh man. All right, Tim. We'll, we'll, I want it to happen so we go watch a ball game together. And yeah, that's what I said. And, yeah. Oh, believe me, it's on my calendar. It's like I got. I'm starting to look at the the schedules. You'll have to. You'll have to. You know, look at that schedule. Let me know like what's the definite the definite game yeah. to go to. Because I'm yeah. with. I'm not Notre Dame, I don't want to jinx it right now. I don't want to jinx anything with Derby. Yeah. So. Well, this this month is when I start planning out my fall travel. Okay. In between Notre Dame having three commits in Charlotte, um. You know, and you know the Florida kids, Sean Cevillano. I mean, there's a lot for in state even for me. Um, it was going to be Isaiah Canyon, but you know, got Cole Mullins and Anthony Knapp. Um, heck, maybe they get Bradley Shaw in Alabama. We haven't talked about him yet. So there's a lot for me in the Southeast. So I'm probably only leaving Charlotte. You need a few times. You know, two, two, three times this fall. Um, Speaking of Charlotte, real quick, was that Kyle Kelly's guy last week in your little battles you guys always do? Wasn't that a safety he had? Is that a Charlotte kid? Charlotte kid, yeah. Um, young Jordan Young. So yeah, uh, I, I think it might be more Raleigh Durham area than Charlotte. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, I, I can't remember, but gotcha. but he's North Carolina kid, correct? Yeah. So, anyways, I'm not going to be leaving the state or, or the southeast too much. So uh, got to do Boston now. Boston, yeah, will be do nice. Boston. Make, it been, make it happen. I haven't been to uh, I haven't been to Massachusetts since I was like 16, 17. So, um. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Okay. Um, so, all right. So, we just touched on Deuce Knight. The last thing I wanted to talk about, Tim, uh, was Kingston Viliamuasa. Okay. And his commitment date of – Singer did not jot that down. I forget. I know it's later this month. It's Yeah, it's in July 23rd, 24th. I could, you know, could be wrong, but I thought I it was – That's on that. Yeah, July 23rd. Okay. Um. I hear Ohio State, Tim. Um, don't, don't tell Notre Dame fans. I that. know. I'm not going to say that on a live show that I'm hearing this Ohio State, but uh, no, that's it's. I, I, I want to say I, I, you know, I'm not flipping my prediction yet. I don't know. I probably won't. I might just let that ride, even if it is Ohio State. You guys know how I am. I don't like right. that ride. Yeah. The kids already made the silent commitment or whatever, but uh. Yeah, I need to dig a little bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, I hear the most buzz about Ohio State for Billy on the law. So, how how would this make you cry, Tim? Yeah, <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah, this one will make me throw a glass against the wall. I guess it's Justin Scott. I was like, yeah, he's not visiting. At least, at least Kingston got on a plane and worked his butt off to come out for the spring game this year and visit before the official visit. Brought his parents and stuff, things of that nature. Obviously, it went a great visit. The reports off of that were outstanding. His family's excited, loves Notre Dame, all that good hoot and holler and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is a biggie. I mean, he he's always him and Lambert. I've I've said for six months are my my top two picks because I'm a huge fan of offensive tackles at Notre Dame, and Lambert would give Notre Dame another elite top 100, top 50 offensive tackle. And then with Kingston, it's it's the tentacles that come with this. And if he goes to Ohio State, Ohio State's had St. John Bosco kids. They had uh, the big offensive guard, Wyatt Davis, who was the state player of the year in California as a guard. How crazy is that? Goes to Ohio State, starts, he's in the NFL. There's a current linebacker on uh, the Buckeyes roster now from Bosco that Kingston played with, so he probably knows him. So there you go. You got Bosco kids going to Ohio State, playing, having success of that nature. So that's the ten. When I say tentacles, that's what Notre Dame needs. They need to get into the Trinity League, the best football in America, high school, and get one of these elite dudes that could play as a freshman. Notre Dame, Ohio State, all these schools, and then just start trickling out. Hey, Kingston's going there. We got to go there. So I all. I mean, so many modern day guys always look at Ohio State because. Past dudes have had success, and it's just it's word of mouth, and, and it starts to go from there. Okay, two things. One, again, folks, don't hold me to Ohio State. Like I, I'm not very sure. It's just kind of the buzz I've heard. Um, but 
I, you know, there's different sources that I, I still really want to check in with. So stay tuned to blueandgold.com. Um, the other thing was, this is a recruitment where I, I would still imagine Notre Dame, even if he does pick, you know, Ohio State or USC, I would imagine they'll keep recruiting him, the staff at our at Notre Dame. Like, they'll, they'll keep going after him. I, I, I wouldn't, like, would they be able to flip it? I don't know, but they love this kid. They'll, they'll keep going after him. So just like Justin Scott, just like Caleb Beasley. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I hate this. I said it earlier, and I hate it because I'm not a Buckeye guy. It's like, it's, but it's Ohio State. They're a, an elite football program. You know, people, oh, some guy just said, well, they haven't won anything. Well, they just they beat Alabama a couple of years ago in 2014 and got them to the title game. They're a program that wins a lot of football games. They just win a lot of football games. I went back. Someone on the message board was talking the same type of thing, was talking about, oh, Ohio State, they haven't done anything. So I went back all the way to 1993, you know, Notre Dame's last great team. And what I was looking for is Ohio State with losing records. And Cooper, I think, had a losing record maybe in his first or second year at Ohio State. And then since 93, so 93 to 2022, Ohio State has has won 10-plus games 23 times, Mike. Notre Dame has done it 10. That's it. So it's like they're they're up there, and that's why this big that's why this game this year is big, huge. Because there's probably no reason for them to play in preseason, you know, great uh, non conference, excuse me, ever again with the way the playoffs are going. So this may be the last time the Buckeyes ever come to South Bend. So it is a massive football game in September. All right. Um, that just about does it. We'll let Tim give some closing thoughts in a second, but a quick programming update this Friday. I'm out of town. Um, I did get a text from one Mike Goolsby. Um, I'm not going to say the name of who we're going to be interviewing just in case it falls through. But if you watch our last show with Goolsby, then, you know, and you watch the end of it, then you, you can kind of figure it out. So we're recording that. Friday morning before I go out of town. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about that. Mike, is that the guy who catches a pass? No. Damn. Okay. Gotcha. Hey, who, who, who would you think that is? He had talked about, um, a couple wide receivers from his time. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No. Um, so no recruiting show Friday. But it looks like we will have a Goolsby show on Sunday. So um, I am is there anything on Sunday? Let, let Mike Sanger look at his old calendar. I don't think we have anything important Sunday. So I think I'm good Sunday. And then next week, Tim. Okay, I have a haircut at 630. <laughs> and next Wednesday, I'm out of town. So I think 8 o'clock next Tuesday, Tim. There you go. I'll see you then. Okay. All right, so that's it, Tim. Any closing thoughts before we wrap up here? No, stay positive. <laughs> we have a training camp, everybody. God, can we finally talk football, correct? Training camp starts, what, a couple weeks? They have to go early because they're playing that week zero game. So let's just start talking about some football, some camp, the battle for number two, Mike. This is going to be massive for the, the underbelly of this season. Uh, who's the number two quarterback? Because it's going to be, do they take a transfer again uh, once the Stanford game ends? Which I can't wait to get into that conversation. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to start to take place here once this camp, training camp begins for Notre Dame. So looking forward to that and getting excited to uh, play uh, some football and see uh, Sam Hartman throw for seven touchdowns and get the Heisman hype going, right? Yeah. Against Navy. Tennessee State. Get those stats rocking and rolling. Tim's going to become the biggest Sam Hartman fan. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, I love, I always love Sam Hartman. Oh, I agree. Oh, Paul, I agree. Tim. He's going to have 15 touchdowns, 15 touchdowns in the Central Michigan Tennessee State Navy game. He's going to have 15 touchdowns. And but then you're going to get to be the bad guy. And then you're going to do the night game on the 23rd is what matters. So that's going to be the fun one. That's Dennis going to be the likes the man. Dennis, I'm sure you're talking about me and not my goals. Be, I'm sure. I'm I sure. Love that. I love that. All right, Tim. You I appreciate it. this. I thought this was a good show, man. I had a lot of fun. Hey, for July and just, yeah, bad All news, true. trying to stay positive, just trying to talk with people out there. It's, you know, it's July, man. We're All in right. the dog days of summer, Mike. 
I do want to say one last thing. Because I always like to address like what we we title and thumbnail these things on our YouTube show. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> this one got a little bit of hate. So I put I, I I had our graphics people make time for panic question mark. So you know this was a topic like should you panic about Notre Dame recruiting? Sure. Right. If I, you ask a question in a headline or you know put in the thumbnail, the answer can be yes. And and someone said like. My goodness, why even push this narrative? What is going on here? Top 10 of class of, and now there's time to panic? Like, uh, and then this guy says, this is an idiotic headline. You were better than this. Again, when you put the question mark, yeah, that's the different question. than if I didn't put the question mark. If I didn't put the question mark, it just says time for panic. Then that means, oh, crap. I, I think it's time to panic. But if I add the question mark, I can say yes or no. And clearly, our answer is no. It's not time for panic. Come on, folks. So yes. you know, reading comprehension is very important. Okay. There's no, uh, yeah, there's no pushing. I, I, we're far from pushing the narrative. It's time to panic and go crazy and far from that. If anyone watches this show and thinks we're pushing a panic narrative, please comment and, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll chat with you guys. And we will do that next Tuesday. Again, Goolsby Show looking like Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, myself and Tim Hyde next Tuesday. Um, and yeah, make sure you head to blueandgold.com. Go to bluegoldonline.com to pick up a football preview. Um, and uh, if you're just joining us here in the past 10, 15 minutes or so, yep, there's the copy. Just refresh. Go watch the beginning of the show. Catch up on what you missed. Please do hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel before you get out of here. And as always, folks, we will catch you next time.